My name is Longbottom. How do you do, Mr. Davis? Davis is the name. Have a drink? Yes. And you are Marston. Anthony Marston. Hello, Mr. Marston. Pleased to meet you. Thank you, Mr. Longbottom. Don't mind if I do. Bit of a stiff climb up here. What a view and what a height. Reminds me of Sea of Theatre, this place. Does it? Of part. Oh, uh, late or dirty? Mm. Really? Yeah. Well, here's the tablets. Do you, uh, know Sea of Theatre? Me? No. Uh, well, that's where I'm from. That's my natal state. <laughs> Interesting country, I should think. Finest country in the world. Gold, silver, diamonds, oranges, everything a man could want. Talk about a land overflowing with beer and skittles. Uh, how do you do? General Mackenzie, isn't it? I'm Mrs. Owen's secretary. Mrs. Owen's been detained in London, I'm afraid, and won't we'll be down until tomorrow. Can I introduce Captain Lamar, Mr. Marston, and Mr. Davis. Davis is the name. Whiskey and silver, sir. Uh, thank you. You in the service? Formerly in the King's African Rifles. Two tank for me at least, Tom. I chucked it. That's it. One. That will be all. Thank you. <laughs> Where is Mrs. Owen? Miss Brent, isn't it? I'm Mrs. Owen's secretary. Mrs. Owen has been detained in London, I'm afraid. And it won't be down until, until tomorrow. tomorrow. Davis. Davis is the name. May I take your case? Tell me, give me a drink. A dry martini, a glass of sherry, whiskey and soda. I never touch alcohol. You never touch alcohol? I suppose you know, young man, that you left us standing there on that wall. Miss Brent, I'm afraid I was to blame for that. I wanted to. It seems to me most extraordinary that Mrs. Owen should not be here to receive her guests. Perhaps she's just the kind of person who can't help us in treasures. That's what I reckon she is. Not at all. Mrs. Owen isn't the least like that. Perhaps it was her husband's fault. She hasn't got a husband. I should like to go to my room. Of course. I'll take you there. You'll find Mrs. Rogers upstairs. She will show you to your room. I'm afraid our host and hostess have arrived. My name's Lama. Nigel Walker. How do you do? How do you do? Have a drink? Yes, please. A whiskey. How are you? Davis. Davis is the name. I say, wonderful place you've got here. Quite unique. As you say, quite unique. Your drink, sir. Old Badger Berkeley wrote up here. Who did you say? Badger Berkeley. He wrote me in for the show. When's he coming? I don't think he is coming. Nobody the name of Berkeley. That dirty old double crosser. He's let me down. Well, it's a pretty wizard island. Rather, a wizard girl, that secretary. She ought to pick things up a bit. I say, man. What about dressing for dinner? If there's time. Let's go and explore. How wizard! Things are a bit at sixes and sevens with the Owens not turning up. I say, tricky place for a holiday. Don't you think so? 
Oh, judges look like tortoises. They have that grimmest way of darting their heads in and out. Mr. Justice Wargrave is no exception. I hadn't realized such a judge. Oh, yes. He's probably been responsible for sending more innocent people to their death than anyone in England. Hello, you. Do you two know each other? Mr. Armstrong is playing the Armstrong and I just said that the old boy. Yes, I heard you. And so did he, I think. Sir Lawrence. Miss Brent, isn't it? There is something I want to ask you. Will you come out here, please? Of course. A remarkably fine night. Absolutely wizard car! A supercharged Valeri Colado. You don't see many of them on the road. I can get a hundred out of her. Did you come from London? Yes, 208 miles, and I did it a bit over four hours. Too many cars on the road to keep it up, though. Touch an idea about the Saturday plane. Not bad, eh? I think you passed my number right. Oh, yes. You nearly dragged me through the ditch. Did I? Sorry. If I'd seen your number, I'd have reported you. But you were footling in the middle of the road. Footling? <laughs> me, footling? Oh, oh well. Watch about a drink. Good idea. <laughs> Miss Claiborne? No, thank you. Good evening, Mrs. Ellen. Why, Mrs. Owen? You'd make the most attractive wife for any wealthy businessman. Do you always flirt so outrageously? Always. Well, now we know. Tell me, what's our Miss Brett talking to the judge about? She tried to bun home upstairs. I don't know. Funny, she seems so definite that there wasn't a Mr. Owen. You don't think that Mr. Owen... I mean, that there isn't, that they aren't. Married to me. Damn shame we didn't know each other. We drove down together. Yes, that would have been grand. I'd like to show you what I can do about the precise way play. I'll tell you what, maybe we can drive back down together. Oh, but I... But it seems damn silly. I've got an empty car. Yes. But she likes the way she's going back. And? Look, aren't they sweet? Those ten little china soldiers. Then there's the nursery one. What are you talking about? What figures? What nursery on? Ten little sort of boys going out to dine. One chose his little self, and then there were nine. Nine little sort of boys sat up very late. One overslept himself, and then there were eight. Eight little soldier boys travelling in death. One got left behind, and then there were seven. Ladies and gentlemen, silence, please. You are charged with these indictments that you did respectively, and at diverse times committed the following. Edward Armstrong, that you did cause the death of Louisa Mary Cleese. William Henry Bloor, that you brought about the death of James Stephen Lindor. Emily Caroline Brent, that you were responsible for the death of Beatrice Taylor. Vera Elizabeth Claythorne, that you killed Peter Ogilvy Hamilton. Philip Lombard, that you were guilty of the deaths of 21 men, members of an East African tribe. John Gordon Mackenzie, that you sent your wife's lover, Arthur Richmond, to his death. Anthony James Marston, that you were guilty of the murder of John and Lucy Combs. Thomas Rogers and Ethel Rogers, that you brought about the death of Jennifer Brady. Lawrence John Wargrave, that you were guilty of the murder of Edward Seaton. Prisoners at the bar, have you anything to say in your defense? Nothing much. She's fainted, that's all. She'll be around in a minute. Get some brandy. Rogers, get some brandy. He was not speaking. It sounded... What's going on here? What kind of practical joke was that? Where the 
Where did that voice come from? Here we are! You are charged with the easy net that Turn it off! Turn it off! It's horrible! It's graceful and half respectable joke. So you think it's a joke, do you? What else would it be? At the moment, I'm not prepared to give an opinion. Who the devil turned it on and set it going? We must inquire into that. Oh dear me! Oh dear me! Allow me, miss. Allow me, sir. Sometimes, if I speak to her. Ethel. Ethel. It's alright. Alright, do you hear? Pull yourself together. You'll be alright now, Mrs. Rogers. Just a nasty time. Did I faint, sir? Yes. It was the voice. The awful voice. Like a judgment. Where's the brandy? Drink this, Mrs. Rogers. I'm alright now. It just gave me a turn. Of course it did. Gave me a turn too. Wicked lies it was. I'd like to know. Who was it to put that record on the gramophone? Was it you, Rogers? I was just following orders, sir. Whose orders? Mr. Owens. Let me get this quite clear. Mr. Owens' orders were what exactly? I was to put the record on the gramophone in the study. I was to start with that one, sir. A very remarkable story. It's the truth, sir. Before heaven, it's the truth. I didn't know what it was. Not for a moment. It had a title. Oh, Is there a title? A title? Yes, sir. It's entitled Swan Song. The whole thing is preposterous, preposterous, slinging accusations about like this. Something must be done about it. This fellow Ellen, whoever he is. That's just it. Who is he? That is what we must go into very carefully. I should suggest you get your wife to bed, Rogers. Then come back here. Yes, sir. I'll give you a hand. You should be all right, Doctor. Yes, quite all right. I don't know about you, sir, but I feel I need another drink. I agree. I'll get them. Preposterous. That's what it is. Preposterous. I should like a glass of water, please. Yes, I'll get it. I'll have a little whiskey, too. She'll be all right. I've given her a sedative. Now then, Doctor. You want to drink after all this? No, thank you. I never touched it. I saw you, sir. You have this one, General? Now then, Rogers, we must get to the bottom of this. Tell us what you know about Mr. O. He owns the place, sir. I'm aware of that fact. What I want you to tell me is what you yourself know about the man. Well, I really couldn't say. Well, you see, I've never seen him. What do you mean you've never seen him? We've been here just under a week, my wife and I. We were engaged through a registry office, the Regina, in Plymouth. That's a high class fan. We can check on that. Have you got that letter? The letter engaged in us. Here it is, sir. Go on with your story. We arrived here like the letter said, on the 4th. Everything was in order. Plenty of food and salt, and everything was very nice. Just needed. Thus, they did that. What next? Nothing, sir. That is. We got orders to prepare the guest rooms for our house party. Eight. And then yesterday, by the morning post, I received another letter stating that Mr. and Mrs. Owen might be detained in London, and if so, we was to do the best we could. It gave instructions on dinner and putting the gramophone record on. Here it is, sir. Hmm. Headed Ritz Hotel in Type Britain. Coronation machine. Number five. Quite new. No defects. Instant paper. We shan't get much out of this. We might try fingerprints, but it's been handled too much. What the little detective? Look, sir. It's got some funny Christian name on it. Olin Norman? <laughs> Quite a mouthful. I am obliged to you, Mr. Marston. You have drawn my attention to a very curious and suggestive point. I think the time has come for us to pull our information. It would be well for everybody to come forward with all of the information they have regarding our unknown host. We are all his guests. I think the time has come for us to explain exactly how that came about. There's something very peculiar about all this. 
I received a letter with a signature that was not very easy to read. It purported to be from a woman whom I had met at a certain summer resort two or three years ago. I took the name to be Ogden. I am quite certain I have never met or become friendly with anyone by the name of Owen. Have you got that letter, Miss Brent? Yes, I'll fetch it for you. Miss Claythorne. I never actually met Mrs. Owen. I worked at a holiday post, so I applied to a secretary agency. Miss Grenfell's in London. I was offered the post and accepted. And you were never interviewed by a prospective employer? No. Here's the letter. Soldier Island, Sticklehaven, Devon. I received your name from Miss Grenfell's agency. I understand she knows you personally. I shall be glad to pay you the salary you ask, and shall expect you to take up your duties on August 8th. The train is the 1210 from Paddington, and you will be met at Oak Bridge Station. I enclose five pounds for traveling expenses. Yours truly, Una Nancy O. Mr. Marston. Don't actually know the Owens. Got a letter from a friend of mine. Major Berkeley told me to roll down here. Surprised me a bit that I had an idea the old horse was in Norway. I haven't got the wire. Thank you. Dr. Armstrong. In the circumstances, I think I may admit that my visit here was professional. Miss Owen wrote me that he was worried about his wife's health. Her nerves, to be precise. He wanted a report without her being alarmed. He therefore suggested that my visit be regarded as that of an ordinary guest. You had no previous acquaintance with the family. No. But you had no hesitation in obeying the summons? A colleague of mine was mentioned in a very okay. well. He came up before me for trial in June of 1930. He was ably defended, and the jury took a liking to him in the witness box. He was charged with the murder of an elderly woman. Nevertheless, on the guilt of on the evidence, he was certainly guilty. I summed up accordingly, and the jury brought in a verdict of guilty. In passing sentence of death, I fully concurred with the verdict. The appeal was lodged, was lodged on the grounds of misdirection. The appeal was dismissed, and the man was duly executed. I wish to say before you all that my conscience is perfectly clear on the matter. I did my duty, and nothing more. I sentence a man to death, rightfully so. Did you know Seaton at all? I mean, personally. I knew nothing of Seaton previous to the trial. The old boy's lying. He swear he's lying. Fellow's a madman. Absolute madman. Got a bee in his bonnet. Got hold of the wrong end of the stick all around. Best, really, to leave this sort of thing unanswered. However, I feel I ought to say no truth. No truth from whatever he said about young Arthur Richmond. Richmond was one of my officers. I sent him on reconnaissance in 1917. He was killed. Also, like to say, he resent very much so. My he started off. He was forbidden to swim far. Once I saw what happened, I started after him. I couldn't get there in time. Was there an inquest? Yes. I was exonerated by the coroner. His mother didn't blame me either. Thank you. Miss Brent. I have nothing to say. Nothing? Nothing. You reserve your defense. There is no question of defense. I have always acted according to the dictates of my conscience. Well, what a law-abiding lot we seem to be. Myself accepted. We are waiting for your story, Captain Armour. I haven't got a story. What do you mean?